Aldrin, as we've been speaking through this morning, we've seen various uh, different uh, emergency services, but also uh, concerned um, respondents and organizations coming to the scene. We spoke with the mayor of uh, the city as well as uh, the MEC of uh, Human Settlement, just giving us a kind of picture of what exactly took place, but also the response from uh, the provincial government with regards to this. But there's been various other organizations that have come on. We've seen uh, different NGOs also coming uh, to give the humanitarian support uh, to those that have been affected by uh, this uh, tragic incident, but also political parties here this morning. Uh, I have with me both we're here, um, you know, just after hearing uh, this tragic incident that took place, 73 people losing their lives. What's your response, you know, you know, to the families that are still, you know, many of them sitting just up the road here, completely left, uh, you know, homeless right now? This is one of the biggest tragedies we've faced in recent while. These are citizens, people who have died. And I send my deep condolences to families. I also have asked our teams to be out here in their numbers, assist where people need places to stay, assist in people being able to identify where people have gone and all of that. But also I think it's going to be important that no more. We must ensure law enforcement take place. People must be held accountable. We need to know the NGO that was responsible and how it adjudicated its own works. And I think today, as South Africans, it's not to come and play politics. Today, as South Africans, we must, if you like, reclaim and make sure cities work for people, ensure buildings are inspected regularly, and more crucially, ensure that in now, in this time, I want to thank all the men and women who have come here from emergency services. I think it represents what we do as people when we work together. And I would urge that going forward from now, Let's prevent more tragedies of this nature from occurring. The issue of uh, the hijacked buildings and abandoned buildings is not something that's uh, you know, extremely new in the city of Johannesburg, but also across the country. And, and these buildings have been identified over time, even when your former party, DA, was you know, leading uh, in uh, this um, city as well. What needs to be done? What more should be done? And what's not being done uh, to ensure we don't see such situations? The collapse of law enforcement will manifest in not only tragedies like this, but you see it in other places occur. Again, rather than Metro Police just simply focused on traffic control, let's bring them back on site to do building inspections on a more regular basis. Rather than the national SAPs just remaining a national competence, let's bring uh, competence lower down to the ground so that we can be much more effective at fighting, at making sure inspections are done regularly, ensuring that building compliance sizes are in place, and more crucially, ensuring that where there are people who break the law, action is taken against them. If you fail at that basic task, making it an issue about immigrants or whatever is a misdirection of the issue. Let's return to the notion of saying, how do we uphold law enforcement and let's capacitate our law enforcement agencies. The, the spend in this country must go there and a partnership between public and private. Because we've already got private security companies who are here. Why can't we partner with them to say, let us inspect buildings on a regular basis so that we capacitate and increase the number of people who are here. So that ultimately we are fighting together to enforce law in this country. That's what we gotta be focused on. Mm -hmm. We have an issue with regards to hijack buildings, but also when the DA was in uh, you know, power here, but also the leadership before that, there was a project and a plan in place to recover these buildings that were left abandoned and for them to be financially viable for the city. Whatever happened and why are we seeing such stagnation in that being implemented and those buildings being reclaimed and, and, and taken over and, and, and bringing the city back money? I mean, one of the things that we've got to do is stop this rotation of mayors. I mean, clearly, this, this system where we don't have a stable administration and you've got political parties here to campaign can't be accepted. What we've got to restore, coming back into the discussion, is to say, how do we stabilize administration, keep a city manager in place, and make sure that our budget allocations, because even today now, I'm hearing from somebody tell me that they've run out of budget allocation as to where people are going to sleep tonight. No, the city must have its own reserves to make sure it looks after people. This is, we've got to make sure we stabilize the coalitions, deliver, keep an administration in place, but be effective at continuously. Because whether you change administration or not, 
the capacity of the city must continue. And a long-term plan as it's in the IDP and it's in the safety enforcement plan that must always be in place going forward. Thank you so much. That was Bosa leader Musa Mamani speaking to us here uh, just outside that building on the corner of Albertus in the inner city of Johannesburg, which set a light at half past one this morning, finding 73 people dead uh, right now. There are many families that are left outside on uh, the side of the road waiting uh, you know, and hoping that they'll have a place to stay tonight. Uh, we know that at least 43 were taken into hospital, many for minor injuries according to the emergency services, many for smoke inhalation. We know that they're still investigating what exactly caused uh, this uh, incident to take place. According to EMS, when we spoke to Robert Malawuzi earlier, saying in his 23 years of being um, a firefighter and being an emergency service a respondent and a first respondent, this was one of the worst tragedies he ever responded to and experienced. So um, just giving you a picture of the magnitude of what's taken place here this morning. It is an ongoing story. We'll keep you updated, bring you different voices, uh, bring you some of those victims um, who hopefully, you know, given uh, you know, the sensitivity of, of, of what happened today, hopefully they will want to still speak to us.